Okay, today I thought I'd give you an inside look into the Space Explorer robot. I can't remember if this is from the 60s or the 70s. I think the 60s. Uh, SH Japan. And it had all kinds of automatic functions as you can see. Walk, stop, moving pictures, sounds. But when it comes down to what's going on the inside, sometimes you guys get interested in that sort of thing and being able to see what's going on. Now the picture drum is here. Obviously this can rotate. I don't know if it'll show up, but there's a little rubber wheel right there. And then this axle, which comes down to this gear. This shaft that this worm gear behind it is on moves left and right due to this leverage. You can see these are two are starting to separate. Normally when they're all the way together, that would be walk mode. When they're fully separated, then that will engage the picture turning. This uh, switch over here will turn the light on inside the drum. And when that moves, there's a little gear, brass gear right back in there. <clears throat> that shifts from connecting to the walking gear to this gear that's on this lever. And this lever is what opens the door on the front of the robot. This is one of the ones that has a door that opens before you can see the movie. Now in all these designs, <clears throat> that gear engages a gear on this lever, turns it till this lever's gears stop, and then it just sits there and chatters on that last two. And that wears a big groove into that brass gear back there. And once you get a good groove one in there, then the doors will either stop opening or if the groove's in the right place, when it moves over, the groove might hit where the walk is, then the walk stops working. Definitely wasn't designed to continue working forever. It was just one of those things where, hey, gets the toy out there and maybe it'll work for a season and then we'll sell one new one next year. Uh, a lot of things that uh, can go wrong with these when you find the old ones. Here you can see this crank that runs in that slot. If kids have taken these legs and manually worked them a lot, they can uh, either bend the metal crank that goes into that slot, that's a crank, or they can actually bend the thin tin slot itself and then you kind of lose your walking action if that happens. Other things that can happen on these crimped leg type robots is depending again how much reefing and pulling the kids have done on it, they can actually slip so the two sides are no longer aligned up and when that happens then the leg will either tip out or tip in because you've change the leverage point between the posts that hold it uh, all together. This entire leg, body mechanism, all of those mechanics, they're held into this robot by these four tabs that connect to the plastic battery box, in almost all cases the plastic battery box. And this plastic battery box is held into the robot by four tabs here. So that's what holds this inside mechanism to this outside body is the interface through this plastic battery box. So again with a lot of rough treatment it's very common to find these plastic battery boxes broken. So now the inside guts aren't secured to the body any longer. So it's something you have to deal with. A lot of the repro battery boxes you can get will you can make them fit by modifying them a little bit. And this guy operated on two D cells, like so. There's your Made in Japan sticker on there. And I guess maybe we don't need this light on, might add more glare. So in run mode, it's just about ready to go into picture mode. So there. I see this is all the way up. That has opened the door on the front of the robot. These pictures will show up on the screen. It doesn't have to move much. You know, shattering you're hearing is, you know, when it gets to the end of the gear. I watch it when it goes back in. See, there isn't a whole lot of movement.
Okay, stop. Now as far as the front goes, this is the door mechanism we're talking about. This lowers down on this particular robot so that you can see what's going on. Those images that you saw back let show up on this white screen. That little lever that doesn't move a whole lot hits this lever right here, which is what performs the opening function. This whole part here, I'm not quite ready to put on because I need to straighten out some of these uh, bent tabs. But basically, this is going to fit right onto the front like that. You can see how it's tabbed in, the top, the big tab there, and the tab at the bottom. Once that's all tabbed in, then the headpiece, which has tabs in the back and some locking tabs there, you'd start by locking these, see how that's shaped, into these larger ones here. There's some tabs on the body right here that need to slip up through there. And when those slip up, then the tabs in the back slip down into their slots. Now, a lot of these slots will have small holes and you can reach in there with something really small like a very small allen wrench or a very small drill bit and you get in and lift up and you bend that tab back up. That's what holds these things together. For example, down on the bottom, it'd be very difficult to get to that tab any other way when the front is put on. So once the front's put on again, you reach in with your tool, you bend the tab. This upper one, since the front goes on before the top, you can bend that upper tab from the, from the inside without too much of a problem. So, there you have it. You have a, a peak. I'll just set that on there for the picture. A peak inside the Space Explorer. In case you ever wanted to know what was going on in there. <laughs>